Hi, Jeremy Burnett, the tall trainer here, and uh, this video is about uh, how to eliminate cravings. Uh, the number one thing um, that you should, <laughs> you should know about cravings is that you should not try to go head to head with your cravings. You know, when you have a craving and you're going to try to, you know, gut it out and battle through it and try not to have that stuff, that is so hard to do. That is such a battle, and you you will fail. You will you will have weak moments, and you won't win that battle. Uh, the best way to deal with that is to is to change the way you're planning things so that the cravings disappear. So these five strategies are uh, are ways we can we can get rid of the cravings, uh, so we don't have to go head to head with them. Okay, strategy number one is don't go long periods between meals. So if you are if you're taking a long time before your next meal, you are going to have a craving and it's going to be a carbohydrate craving. You're going to want the carbs, you're going to want the bread, you're going to want the cookies, you're going to want those kind of things. The longer we go, you know, our blood sugar starts to to tank out. We, 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 it, it drops and it needs to come up. It, it, your boss or your body sends a signal, okay, hey, hey, you haven't fed me in a while, I'm going to make you really hungry so that you, uh, you definitely feed me. Now the thing that it's going to ask for right off the bat is something that's going to affect your blood sugar quickly and it's going to change what's going on fast and so it's going to crave carbohydrates. Once you get to that point, even if you have something that's higher protein and a healthy thing, you're probably still, after you finish eating, still going to have the carbohydrate craving because your blood sugar hasn't been affected yet because some of that food, like especially the protein, things like that, take longer to get in the system. So, so you're still going to have the funky cravings there. So, so you've got to you've got to narrow the time between meals. So if you're having you know good stuff to eat, you know it's that's great. But if you go six hours between meals, you will be starving, and you will probably you will probably fail at that at that attempt. All right, strategy number two, kind of talk about a little bit in strategy number one is eat more protein. Now, if you're having meals that have more protein in them, they are kind of they're like slow release meals. You know, they, they last for hours, they, they take a while to digest. And when you do get hungry from those, it's a gradual build-in of hunger. Now, now when you have that gradual build-in, you know, you can, you can eat something and it can be something healthy and, you know, it, it, just, it just blends right into the next thing and now you have another, you have another meal and everything's kept very, very even. Now, if you have mostly carbohydrates and, uh, and you skip the protein, What's going to happen is your blood sugar is going to get pumped up. You're going to feel really full, maybe even bloated, <laughs> and then you know an hour and a half later, you're going to be really, really hungry again because all of that sugar is now going into storage. Everything's been digested because sugar is very fast at digesting, and so now now you're stuck with a carbohydrate craving, and and now it's no fun. <laughs> now you're probably going to lose. So get more protein in your meals every time you eat. All right, strategy number three. Now we talked about the, the other ones, not going too long eating protein. This one's going to seem a little bit funny to you uh, because I'm going to tell you to eat more fat. You need to put more fat in your diet. Now, now typically if you're not watching what you're eating, you're going out to eat and things like that, fat is not an issue. But if you're actually, you know, most people when they start to try to lose weight, they cut most of their fat out. They cut too much fat out of their diet. And so now they're, they're actually in trouble there because they're never going to feel satisfied. Fat in our diet br brings great satisfaction with the eating. So there, if, you, if you're just having protein and carbohydrates, you're always going to have this, this weird hungry feeling. It's like a funky hungry. Sometimes, sometimes Sarah and I call it a fungry because it's just, it's just a weird feeling. So a lot of times if, if, you're, not, if you're not high enough on your fat level, you will, you'll have this weird hunger, even though you've had a lot of food to eat. There's just something that's not satisfied. And so, so we gotta make sure that, you know, at least 20% uh, to 30% of your calories are coming from fat. So that means you get, you get to actually add fat to some food. Like if you're having a meal with, with spinach and grilled chicken and, uh, and maybe some, you know, some small amount of carbohydrate, you know, you know, that's, that's good, that's good, there's a lot of healthy things in there, but there's not enough fat, the chicken is too lean. And so you're actually gonna have to try to add some fat to that. So you can, you know, you can have a salad with, with some dressing on it, and you can actually have some fat in that salad dressing. You, know, you shouldn't be going for the no fat stuff. You actually get some in there. Now you should measure it and be careful, but 
a lot of times you may have to add some fat in to feel satisfied. So, so we're not taking long breaks between meals, we're eating protein and now we are eating some fat to keep ourselves even more stabilized. Tip number four, eat more fiber in your diet. Similar stuff as the protein and really sort of as fat too, um, but fiber takes longer to digest. It takes a while, it slows things down, it makes things run smoother, you're not getting the crazy wild ride when you're getting enough fiber in. Uh, fiber from, from natural sources is ideal. Uh, one thing you'll notice is, is uh, you know, the, the vegetables and things like that, they tend to be very high in fiber. So having some of those, they're very low calorie, high in fiber, they also give you a full feeling. So you actually, you know, it fills up the space without adding a lot of calories to it. And so you won't have as much craving because you'll actually have, have a full stomach. And it will, and it will take a while to move through because it's fiber and it's going to take your system a little while to work on it. And that will keep you much more even and, uh, and keep those cravings away. Strategy five. So our fifth strategy here, and this one's really pretty simple, um, but uh, again, most people don't do that, these things, so that's why I gotta, I'm telling you so that you can fight this battle ahead of time. Uh, water got to drink more water. You know, if you're getting enough water in your body, it's going to satisfy you a lot more. You need to cut out sugary drinks in favor of water. If you're going for the sugary drinks, again, that takes you on that ride, so you get your your body gets confused. You know, you one one you when you have the sugary drinks, your blood sugar goes up and down and all that kind of stuff and you get those cravings the, the cravings from that. Now, also when you're thirsty, you know, if you're constantly drinking, you know, the the high carbohydrate drinks or even the fake carbohydrate drinks like the diet drinks, you know, your body gets confused. So when it's thirsty, it starts asking for those instead of asking for water because it knows that's kind of the only way it usually gets water. So, so you want to make sure that you start making a transition to drinking more water. Now that makes every system work better. You know, your body feels better. Uh, a lot of times we confuse a carbohydrate craving for a thirst craving too. And so if we drink a lot more water, we can decrease some of those cravings as well. So and another thing, water does fill up your stomach too. So now again, another way of keeping yourself feeling fuller. So the five strategies is, is don't wait so long between meals. You need to cut that down. It should be closer to three or four hours between meals. Um, you should have protein, fat, and fiber in that meal. Now keep the carbohydrates lower. You know, not, not quite as much of the starchy carbohydrates, you know, more of the fibrous carbohydrates of, uh, of vegetables and things like that in the meal. And then the last one, strategy five, is more water. Drinking more water is going to help level you out. If you apply these five strategies to your eating, you will absolutely see a drop in your cravings. And when you see a drop in your cravings, you're gonna be able to be more exact and, uh, and stay on your, on your nutrition plan better, and you'll be eating healthy, and you will see some great results on the scale, on your body, you know, in inches, all that stuff. So apply these strategies, get rid of cravings, and it's so much better this way. Do not go head to head with the craving. You're not a failure if you have a craving and you, go, and you satisfy it, you eat something sweet. You know, satisfy the craving. When you have it, satisfy it, get it done with, and then eat something with protein in it so that way you can, you can right the ship again. So don't beat yourself up, don't say I'm a failure because I, I messed up, I had a craving. Just have the craving, eat something that, that'll satisfy it, and then, and then move on and plan ahead next time, figure out which one you messed up on, or maybe several of them that you missed out on, and get those strategies in place, and you will see the cravings stop before they even start.